World Lacrosse Men's Championship presented by Rady Children's Hospital. Pool A play resumes. A couple of unbeatens as Australia meets the United States of America. For Australia, it took a little bit of time last night, but eventually they found their stride. For the USA, it all came together in the second half thanks to the youngest member of Team USA in two decades, Brendan O'Neill. His three goals paced the Stars and Stripes. A look at the standings after the Haudenosaunee won their game against England, a three-way tie at the top. And of course, the winner of this game will move on in first. Everybody alongside lacrosse analyst Quint Kestenick. I'm Cooper Perkins. We're thrilled to have you with us tonight. Quint, let's talk about the United States of America. For them, some adjustments they'd surely like to make to score off of, of face-offs uh, and maybe score off of the rise. Find ways to score in non-traditional manners. If there's any player that can pace them in that way and steady the ship a little bit, it's the man in the NLL that they call Captain America, Tom Schreiber. Well, he's the best passing midfielder on the planet. And they've got him running alongside Michael Sowers and Brennan O'Neill, where his passing skills are clearly emphasized. He'll have his eyes up, looking for help. One area for the United States of America where they figure to have a massive advantage, not just on Australia, but virtually anyone in the tournament, the face-off X. This could be gigantic tonight. T.D. Erlin on the left, a Yale graduate with a degree from Denver, Trevor Baptiste, who played at Denver, by far the two best on the planet, both PLL stars. And my guess is they'll win probably 85% of the face-offs, and that's gonna be the biggest challenge for Australia. We'll see one of the two of them on the other side of this break. Face-off coming up from Torero Stadium. You're watching the 2023 World Lacrosse Men's Championship. Sunny San Diego, California. The settings don't get any better for international lacrosse. The Sharks of Australia, 1-0 in pool play against the United States of America, also 1-0. Starters for the United States of America, Matt Rambo, Rob Pinnell, Kieran McArdle, JT Giles Harris, Liam Burns, Jack Rowlett, Trevor Baptiste will take the face up, Jesse Bernhardt, and between the pipes, Blaze Reardon. For Australia, Ashby Dennis, Chris Moffitt, Lucky Russell, Tim Graham takes the face, Connor McDonough, Cam Semler, Jeff Millsap, Lucas Parsons-Quintio, and in the cage, Ryan Spark. 
think the only notable in the lineups is Matt Dunn, 33, and white for Team USA. Defender out of Maryland is a non-dress tonight. Well, Australia gets the first possession of the evening, and they'll work it around behind with Lockie Walker. This is a tough matchup for the Sharks offense and a measuring stick game for them and their head coach, Glenn Meredith. Said before the game, hey, this is the best team in the world across the way. We get to see how we stack up. Lucas Parsons Quintio spins it back around for Braden Panty. Drake Richard defends. He and Danny Logan make up an outstanding short stick defensive midfield. Now back through Lucky Walker. Isaac Cahill, a hat trick last night in the come from behind win over England in which Australia trailed three to nothing and then held England scoreless for 40 minutes controlled that game and their time of possession really mounted as the game went on. That's something they're looking to do tonight. Long possessions take advantage of there being no shot clock. Beating the middle for Cahill. And the U.S. comes up with it. Bernhardt. Tell you, I thought last night the strongest quality of the Australian offense was their ability to get the ball inside into the slot area for high percentage shots. First look at Team USA's offense. Tom Schreiber, Captain America, will direct traffic and get them into things to Matt Rambo behind the cage. As Team USA, just seven goals in the win over Canada. They were very content down the stretch of that game to milk possession and keep the ball away from the ever dangerous Canadian offense. Michael Sowers to top side. Two-man game with McArdle. McArdle. Stopped by Ryan Spark. Did you see that Michael Sowers split dodge right to left? Wow! You talk about speed, acceleration. He looked like, like Pac-Man Jones returning a kick or something. Man, what incredible, incredible change of direction. Yeah, Sowers is one of the most dangerous players on USA's offense. Watch this move. Right to left. Look at the crossover. He generates like five yards of separation. It's that explosiveness that you don't see a whole lot from some of the other countries in contention. Sowers just one piece of the equation for Team USA. Spark making the save. What's interesting is that he gets to start. The 36-year-old, we thought we'd see Sean Aaron. Absolutely expected Aaron after maybe the performance of the tournament so far last night. 11 saves on 15 shots. At a certain point, Team England was seeing ghosts shooting at the net. Looking for a spark? Can I say that? Absolutely you can. Australia methodical. Mitch Baker. Just played his freshman season at Rutgers. Takes things behind the net and inverts on Zach Goodrich. Baker probing. That goal line extended, now reverses, looking for help. He'll re-dodge and instead move the ball along. As the Sharks of Australia have never beaten Team USA in 18 tries in World Championship play. They would love to change that tonight, but know just how huge that task would be. Lockie Walker, defended by Jesse Bernhardt, one of the three captains for Team USA. This is Sharks group, fourth in Israel, back in 2018 in Netanya, fourth in Denver, 2014. Their best finish back in 1994 when they shocked Canada and finished in second place in 94. Yeah, these teams have met in the finals, actually, on three separate occasions, dating all the way back to 1967. The Sharks, a huge point of pride as they are a program that runs deep with former Sharks coaching them top to bottom. Glenn Meredith played the World Championships in 1990. He is the head man. These guys are tough. I mean, these guys are like, they're like the Outback. You know, they're not going to get tired. They're going to sting you occasionally with a poisonous snake or a spider, like right here. But the shot spins wide off the stick of Cal Gibson. One of the three players they deemed the jitterbugs, him, McDonough, and Cahill. They're in great physical condition. They never get tired. Baker couldn't get it around Reardon. And they'll get him in the crease. And the Aussies compete. And they love each other, and they love their nation. They are never, ever, ever an, an easy out. 
the way they see it, just getting to the tournament took 75 or more different roadblocks to be overcome. This is just another one in their way. Obviously, it's a huge challenge. The United States of America, likely the best team in the world. Canada surely will have something to say about that before the tournament is over. But nonetheless, the Sharks with the measuring stick game for themselves, right now unbeaten in pool play after beating England last night. Charlie Bertrand, one of the seven goals for Team USA and one of the better stories for the Stars and Bars. Three-time national champion between Division II and Division I. Oh, look, Ryan Conrad lost his handle on it. And the Aussies scoop it up. Tom Graham trots it in. Bertrand back on defense in unfriendly territory. He is an omid by trade. They'll want to sub him off if they get the chance. They got Bertrand and Kelly caught on. Right now it's Cal Gibson. But he's having a hard time just getting away from the long stick of Jack Rowlett and cannot do it as Team USA forces a turnover. And taking care of the ball is just so important for Team Australia tonight. In a game played without a shot clock, there'll be fewer possessions. And so turnovers are magnified, penalties are magnified, face-offs become just absolutely critical. Six and a half minutes in, still trying to crack the seal between the USA and Australia in pool A play. The second full day of games at the World Championships. Pinnell spins it back for Rambo, driving right at Chris Moffitt, hard shoulder. Leaves it off, Schreiber whips it wide. <laughs> Pennell to initiate. Pennell, top side. Defended by Donnie Howard. Now drops it off, penalty flag flies in. Schreiber rings the corner. And the USA has a one nothing lead. This is gorgeous team offense for head coach John Donowski. Talk about sharing the ball, spinning the rock, in an offensive set that starts with a post up by Rob Pinnell. Right here, he draws the eyes in the double team and gets that ball moving to the weak side through Brennan O'Neill and then Schreiber from 10 yards. Good start for the USA offense. They're up one nothing. Kids grow up, and it goes by fast. At Rady Children's, we're growing up too. Always looking for answers and new and better ways to care for your kids. That's true. Researching, innovating, breaking ground. As they soar to new heights, Ignition. we're ready for takeoff too. Lift off. We honor our indigenous roots and international history. Lacrosse is more than a game. We play with speed, heart, and precision. Young, modern, electric, inclusive, growing across the globe. Lacrosse is everyone's sport, governed globally by World Lacrosse. Experience real in a whole new way. From the all-new Rescue Junior, where learning about saving animals is fun, to the icy mission of the all-new Arctic Rescue, the longest and fastest straddle coaster on the West Coast, and spectacular new shows, concerts, parades, and fireworks, all in a world you need to rediscover. Get tickets as low as $64.99 during our 4th of July sale. SeaWorld San Diego, real amazing. The USA out to a 1-0 lead and certainly leading the swag department as the fans have filed into Torero Stadium on the campus of the University of San Diego. Tonight's matchup, one of a couple top 10 matchups on the day. Hodeshoni beating England, Israel beating the Philippines and the United States right now leading Australia 1-0. 30 nations are here in San Diego of the 86 internationally that play lacrosse. I, I met 
reps from Kenya and Ukraine while the Haudenosaunee were, were, were beating England uh, in the end zone. And, and an amazing story from the Ukraine where they're starting middle school lacrosse. They started with one lacrosse stick and two lacrosse balls. And I, m I met the gentleman who, who's pushing that movement. Uh, FCA is also highly involved with uh, sending a group over to Kenya this summer in August to, to foster some youth camps and get equipment to young athletes in, at the middle school level in Kenya. The growth of the game on display this week. We saw an incredible display of sportsmanship between Team Uganda and Team Japan. After Japan beat Uganda 18 to nothing, the Ugandan team could not wait to take pictures with their adversaries from Japan. Meanwhile, Rambo probes his way, moves it for Charlie Bertrand, and the USA gets back into their offense, fresh off Tom Schreiber, cracking the seal. Michael Sowers back with that explosive dodge. Conrad, he moves to the middle, floating backwards and dropping a bit too high for Charlie Bertrand, who gets harassed by Chris Moffat, the Melbourne-born Australian. Rambo attacking the backside. Rambo scores! Ball movement sets it up off the busted play, and Rambo is good of a finisher around the net as you'll find. Iconic number one jersey that he wore at the University of Maryland when he graduated in 2017 and won the Tawaratan Award. But the U.S., their ball movement's giving Australia's defense some issues. And you see that approach. Rambo, known as a left-handed dominant player, pulls that one right-handed and scores his first goal of this tournament. Member of the Whip Snakes, two-time champions of the PLL. Rambo uh, lives in Jacksonville, Florida right now where he loves to golf and play pickleball. Man, it is a pickleball craze. I haven't seen any in San Diego, though. I was you haven't been looking hard enough. I saw some incredible nighttime tennis going on at Canyon Hills High School. There must have been 30 courts filled with middle-aged men, the fittest, most competitive, and guys having so much fun. I was like, wow, you don't see that on the East Coast. That, that, that's a West Coast thing. That is one thing about San Diego. It is a healthy city. Flag comes in. Okay, these U.S. jerseys are pretty cool. Are they reflecting? Are they reflecting light, kind of like a like a running reflector jerseys off the numbers? Am a I little seeing, bit. Am yeah. I seeing that, or is this because the sun is setting and we got some shadows here that I'm that I'm struggling with this? Your eyes do not but deceive they, you. They look like they're they're catching the light. Pretty cool. Officials tonight: Lee Bryan is the head official. Mike Drake, Alex Juice, Mark Buckley, and Rob Cross. The U.S. goes to the man up for the first time. They were 0 for 5 against Canada on the extra man. Around the perimeter, Schreiber, O'Neal, Schreiber with space, underhand, what a finish, oh, hits the post for Rambo, off the feed from Schreiber, digging back into that underhanded bag of tricks, penalty release, McCardle goes high and Spark touches it out, and the Aussies have killed off the penalty. Mark moving his feet, going from pipe to pipe, just making Rambo's job hard enough so that he's got to take an extra fake, and he rattles that one off the post. Schreiber! Picking corners, 3-0 USA. This is all wrists. USA's got a great fan base here in San Diego. Crowd favorites. Rambo spins and carries in back and forth against that short stick matchup that he likes. And Schreiber mirrors him, okay? He, he, he stays relative to Rambo. He doesn't back out of there. When Rambo fades away, he stays with him. It makes that an easy six yard pass on the money. How much of that comes from their box lacrosse experience in the NLL? A, a great deal. You know, I, I think the basis of this offense, Cooper, is going to be two-man and three-man games on a side. You know, you're, you're going to see Rambo working on the left side with O'Neal in a lot of two-man games, and Schreiber's going to be like a center fielder top of the top of the box. On the far side, it's going to be Pinnell and Sowers. And again, Schreiber's going to be top of the box and, and able to play center field. That time, Tommy just read that his defender was, was giving too much ground or shading him 
incorrectly with leverage. Well, the American center fielder has two goals out of the first three. Lucas Parsons Quintio nearly able to intercept the pass. The U.S. hangs on to possession. Clock drifts under three minutes. Bertrand back around for Pennell. Kelly always dangerous to pull the trigger. Boy, does he ever love to shoot. Does it well. Beating in tight, trying to find Bertrand. It's a good idea off of, off of a pick and slip. Loose ball push, they'll ding Australia. USA hangs on. Spark came way out of the net there. Aussies in the man-to-man -man defense. We saw some zone last night in the England-Australia game, zone defense. Conrad Isoween up top, working with Kelly. Now down the alley, back behind the net to Rambo. Pinnell gets underneath for just a quick moment on Campbell McKinnon. Back up top, Pinnell! Around goal line extended, four zip USA. That's just another strong offensive possession. USA is playing fast in the settled sets. Look at this ball movement from near side to far side. And all of a sudden, Pinnell's got an ISO, dodges strong to X, and Russell kind of buys that. Pinnell puts on the brakes and curls top side before the double team. It seems like the Australian defense, Cooper, is pretty eager to double team the ball, pretty even, especially when midfield, when midfield there's uh, initiate. Would you anticipate a change in defensive strategy at some point to the zone we saw last night? Uh, yes, at, at some stage. You know. If I'm Australia, this is the type of game, type of tournament that, that I want to throw multiple looks at the U.S. For my own good, really, to see, to see what's best, to see what we do best, to see what it's going to take to perhaps upset Canada or beat the Haudenosaunee. Now, this is an Australian team. I, I think if you ask them, their goal would be third place. Like, they, they get out of San Diego with a bronze, they'd be really happy. Tarafenko. Drops it off. O'Neill back to Tarafenko. Pinnell feeding McArdle. Fakes and finishes. Easy work on the ball movement for Team USA. This is the prettiest goal that USA has scored so far in this tournament. This is a thing of beauty from defense to offense. This is exactly what Seth Tierney told me pregame, how they want to run and probe and score in transition. You see multiple passes from the righty top spot to the wing. And as the defense reacts, McArdle's in the slot. He just fills the void there left-handed. And he's got a layup. I mean, that's a slam dunk. That is terrific team offense. The top ranked team in the world, a 10-time world champion, United States of America take a five nothing lead. Australia gives the ball back to the USA. They'll get one more possession here with the clock winding under 20 seconds in the first. How quick do they want to go? Matt Rambo with a sense of urgency. As it picked. Seven seconds. Donnie Howard. Howard with purpose. And the first quarter comes to a close. It took six and a half minutes to get on the scoreboard, but the USA peppers the back of the net to a two and a five in the first. The Stars and Stripes up five nothing. You're watching the 2023 World Lacrosse Men's Championship from San Diego, California.
the 2023 World Lacrosse Men's Championship sponsored by Rady Children's Hospital, the largest children's hospital on the West Coast, ranked among the 10 best children's hospitals in the nation. Through 15, the U.S. on top of Australia, five to nothing, and after a slow start on offense, the game matriculating in the way we might have expected. And the number one seed in the tournament with 10 gold medals, their worst finish being second in the World Championships in every iteration since 1967. This team's hungry to get the gold medal that they won uh, in the Tanya in 2018 after losing the 2014 final game to Canada in Denver, uh, eight to five. It's been a uh, super business, business approach. I mean, this Team USA, they were scouting in person last night, the Aust Australia-England game. I, I was blown away by that. You, they showed a shot on ESPN+. Plus. Charlie Toomey was taking notes, defensive coordinator. The players, I, I've heard of really long film sessions. So, so this team is, is here with a purpose, and they're taking care of all the details. Australia off the violation by Baptiste will have the first possession of the second. As the Sharks try and crack the scoreboard, Matt Houston... Houston's a good young player. Mm -hmm. Lancaster, PA, plays at Loyola University where he broke his arm last season. He's got, got one year left. He'll be in grad school next season, 11 in, in green. Graham working things behind Baptiste on defense. They have him trapped a bit. Up for Gibson. And he gets past Reardon. The Sharks are on the board. Step down, City. Step down, City. You see the USA sends three white jerseys to the ball carrier, and that's going to be an issue right here. Left-handed rip from space beats Reardon from yardage. And as that sun now dips, the field is entirely covered in shadows. We're, we're still dealing with, with major sun issues up here. And if you're Blaze Reardon, that may have been an issue on that outside shot. The goal for Cal Gibson, his first of the tournament. Played college ball here in the United States at Coker University. Assisted by Tim Graham, product of Cornell. Tim Graham's a great story. Tim Graham played for Australia in 2016 on the U19. Two years later, he's playing in Natanya against, he was like 18, he's playing against Greg Gorenlian and, and at the senior level. Did so well, he went 52%, that Cornell saw that tape and recruited him to go, go to Cornell where he got his degree. A series of players on this Australia team who have played Division I level in the United States collegiately. One of them, Matt Houston Dodgy, the Greyhound of Loyola, Maryland. Challenge for Graham. Unfortunately, he's a knee down motorcycle grip Fogo. They changed the rules halfway through his college career. So there's no knee down now in college, and, and the grip, there's no motorcycle grip. So they took his bread and butter away from him. He's had a nice career. And his, I know his mom, Ann, is super proud of the work he's done. Houston had it knocked down by Goodrich, but gets it back. Australia back to back possessions to start the second. Finally cracked the scoreboard after the USA pitched a first quarter shutout. Now Gibson whips it wide, backed up there by Mitch Baker, making his first appearance in the Men's World Championships. He is part of their young core that they're so excited about. The Rutgers player, Baker, just all kinds of talent out of Melbourne. Hits the post for Gibson. Got numbers now. If you're the US, you're gonna have a five on four with a little bit of a trailer. Tara Fenko up to Pinnell. Great hustle by the Sharks. That's what they do, right? They are as, as tough to break as anybody, and they're going to get back in the hole in a hurry. I tell you, if you, I've been to Australia once for eight days, uh, exclusively in Sydney, which is not really a lacrosse hub in Australia. M most of the action is in Perth, Adelaide, and, and, and Melbourne. But everywhere you go, you just get a sense that th these are... These are tough folks. They're, they're some of the nicest people on the planet. Bertrand winds and fires, drawing a penalty in the process as his shot skips wide of the cage. Lockie Russell 
will head off and Team USA goes to the man up for the second time. Maki, the lefty, 15, he can be chippy. He's a Melbourne native. I'd say him and, and Moffitt are the best two shark defenders. Moffitt wears 10 in green. U.S. 0 for 1 in the man up today. Rambo, O'Neal, Schreiber into the middle. Behind the back for Rambo, finishes on the doorstep. A little flash and a little sizzle for the Stars and Stripes. Tuesday night, I drove out to Canyon Hills High School to watch Team USA practice, and they, they did a skeleton session with this extra man group. They just from their standard 3-3 set that so many teams, high school teams, rec teams, look at that pass behind the back. It's McArdle with the assist. High level of skill. I mean, the ball is in a stick for a quarter of a second, and they're building chemistry. A gorgeous goal, Rambo for McArdle. McArdle, such a fun story, had a personal renaissance in the National Lacrosse League this season as the lead initiator for the Albany Firewolves. Everyone knows about him from his PLA and PLL days, but finally having some success as an American in the indoor game. The USA still man up here. McArdle rewrote the record books at St. John's program in Queens, New York, now under the, the care of uh, first-year coach Justin Turry. McArdle's the dad to a, an eight-month-old Emerson, his daughter, which is really... It's an awakening experience, and he says it's just galvanized and focused on. Schreiber, another step down and a save by Spark. Put back, steered aside. Schreiber, Schreiber down. goes down hard. Yeah, this is not good. This is not good. This, this is, he shot the ball, and like a quarterback in football, there's a moment where you're exposed, and he took a big time shot. It's good to see him up. Nothing wrong with his lower body. I mean, he's a tough guy, no, no stranger to taking a beating. Mandy Merritt is the Team USA athletic trainer. She works at Notre Dame. Look at the hit that Schreiber took after the shot. Ashby Dennis laying some lumber. Meanwhile, a shot hums high from Connor Kelly. Got into the scoring action against Team Canada in the opening game of the tournament. Schreiber looks okay. That's big for Team USA. 23-man rosters. McArdle and Spark. Maybe got a little bit of help from the post. He did. He did. I think it hit. Cooper, I think it hit him in the shins, down by his socks or the foot, and then trickled towards the goal line and, and kicked off the post. Seven minutes gone in the second quarter. He's done well, hasn't he? He's been great, especially starting in place of Sean Aaron, who we expected to see and have not received an explanation as to why he's not playing. But Spark, if he was just simply the choice, has certainly justified Glenn Meredith in doing so. Spark played in Natanya. He's 36 years old. Okay, that, that's like ancient for goal in terms of goaltending, because your your visual, your your your, your eyes kind of start going uh, in the late 20s. Studies have shown in the late 20s. Don't tell me that. I'm just 28. Don't want to hear that. It's 29 actually. <laughs> but there are current NHL goalies who who take that the, all that science and throw it out the window. Australia draws a penalty. Oh, Gibson. One-handed catch, but not able to get it on net. And the Sharks will head to the man up. But the cool thing about Ryan Spark, who has uh, dealt with an ACL injury in his career. That happened at the World Championships four or five years ago. That's right. They call them the stepbrothers, Aaron and Spark, because, because they look alike. But Spark is a guy who started playing the position of goalie after watching the 2002 NCAA final in the goalie battle between Jay Pfeiffer and Trevor Tierney. Pool A play in the World Championships from San Diego. USA 6, Australia 1, midway through quarter number 2.
Reardon almost perfect between the pipes. Just the one goal by Cal Gibson. The only blemish on his resume thus far. USA, as I said earlier, playing without defender Matt Dunn, who usually wears number 33, the veteran out of the University of Maryland. He is in, uh, what did you say, gym clothes on the sideline? With no noticeable injury? Perhaps a decision made there. Uh, not a healthy scratch, we know that. You only get 23 guys for the length of this duration of this tournament. Gibson swings it up to Braden Panty. Baker initiates with Panty. Score! Isaac Cahill. Ozzy, 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 Ozzy. They love to chant. They love to cheer. Their fans always show up. Lefty sniping, a little sidewinder from a severe angle. Beautiful entry pass from the top of the box down low, feet set, ping a corner. Second Australian goal on the power play. But penalties, Cooper, in this format, this non-shot clock format, but penalties count. They seem to matter a little more. Tarafenko leading the break. Tarafenko scores! The U.S. with a quick answer immediately off the draw. Seth Tierney telling me this team needs to play relaxed and have more fun today, and we want to push things in transition. You know, the other night they won a zillion face-offs, but scored no goals against the Canadians off the draw. Well, here's Tarafenko. The pump fake holds the point, man, okay? If you're a young player out there, that is essential. When you get to the top of the box, put some pressure on the defender. See the subtle head and shoulder fake? That influences the defender. You've got to pump. Give him a hand fake. Give him a head and shoulder fake. It freezes that point, man. It makes him make a decision. Tarafenko, disrespected, makes the goalie turn and rake. Tarafenko, three-time All-American at Ohio State, having great professional careers, both for Chrome in the PLL and for the Halifax Thunderbirds in the NLL, part of a growing American contingent in the box game. Australia, though, has possession off the violation. I think it's a rebirth of, of Americans in the, in the box game because my era, my peers, all played for Philadelphia, New York, Buffalo, when the league, the old M-I-L-L, was much more North American players and fewer Canadians. And then it went towards almost all Canadians, and now it's coming back, as you say, a guy like Tara Franco. So much fun to play, play indoor lacrosse. So much fun. Quite the influence of indoor lacrosse here in San Diego. The local Seals, one of the better teams in the NLL. Right now it's Matt Wood dodging hard down the alley. Lockie Walker, clock at 420 to go in the first half. Australia trying to dig into a five-goal deficit. USA led five to nothing. They've traded goals since then. Walker by himself behind the cage. He's got Bernhardt trapped. And now floats his way out above goal line extended. Walker posting. Walker weirdens there and stands tall in the high bouncer. One thing that stands out, this turf is quite different from Snapdragon and some of the other fields at San Diego State. It's not as spongy. So those balls are gonna bounce a little bit more on shots. This is an amazing, I mean a world-class surface. This stadium is gorgeous and perfect for this event. The fans are hovering on the field. The stands are really steep. They're cut like hockey stands. And so the feeling is like, we're, we're hovering right above the USA bench right now. We're practically over the face-off circle. This is an outstanding venue. Pool A games hosted here at Torero Stadium on the campus of the University of San Diego. What do they play here, football or soccer? Both, football and soccer, both of them excellent programs. Football is actually where Jim Harbaugh came I from. I was gonna say, so, so this there. is the Jim Harbaugh San Diego. And Bertrand buries it with the left hand. Charlie Bertrand's gonna have a big, big World Championships in 2023. The lefty out of Merrimack in Virginia. Why? Because he can play without the ball. He does his best work, setting a pick there, floating to space, catching and finishing to the off post. He's one of these Americans on a roster that's kind of 
loaded with guys who can carry the ball and dodge for themselves. Bertrand does his best work away from the ball. To me, he's a, he's a two-goal-a-game guy in this tournament. Easy. Now Bertrand, one of the best stories on Team USA, has a rocket ship strapped to his back. His ascent from Merrimack to Virginia into a top 22 ranking in the PLL. Six different U.S. scorers on eight goals. Have a timeout here at Torero Stadium. The U.S. comfortably out front by six. You're watching the 2023 Men's World Championships presented by Rady Children's Hospital. For Australia, they're not out of this game yet. They still have work to do. The possession hasn't been as lopsided as I think we expected. What are the adjustments Glenn Meredith needs to make to get a little bit more pressure on Blaze Reardon in the USA defense? Well, I, I think th their issue has been defensively. Like, wh what are their rules going to be here? Are they a quick double-teaming team? Or are they going to be slow to slide? And the USA Dodgers are putting a lot of pressure on their defense. So th they've got to figure that out. Offensively, I kind of like what I'm seeing now. Uh, in the second quarter, doing a better job of getting ball reversal. I thought last night against England, it was kind of singular isolation dodges and then just throwing the ball inside. Tonight, you're seeing the ball spin from one side of the field through X and then attacking the weak, weak side. It's a good look at USA huddle. I believe that's uh, Joe Amplo, head coach of the Naval Academy. Charlie Toomey on the left. San Diego is a huge Navy town. I'm staying downtown, right on the on the the harbor there, with Navy the Midways there, and across the harbor are destroyers and aircraft carriers, and there is a, a massive military presence in downtown San Diego. Yeah, those two things are intertwined, San Diego and the Navy. Of course, the Navy SEALs training ground just up the road, about 40 minutes. So this is a Navy town through and through. A look at Brandon O'Neill, who has an assist tonight, tallied three goals in the opener against Canada, is the youngest member of Team USA since 2002. This looks like an Australian zone defense out of the timeout. They're lined up, you just look at their alignment, it's a straight 3-3 three, three zone. But let's see if, if ultimately they stay, no, it is a zone, so USA has got to recognize this. McArdle has his shot touched out by Ashby Dennis. No backup. No backup, though. Spark the closest man. Lacrosse, of course, when the ball exits, wherever it exits, on a shot, the closest man is awarded possession. Clock at 1.30 to go here in the first half. United States of America by six on Australia in Pool A play. Both teams unbeaten. Seth Tierney, offensive coordinator and head coach at Hofstra now eyeing this possession and you hear him barking out the instructions you got to identify the d is it man or is it zone right now it looks like it's back to man to man conrad a hard dodge gets free gets past spark ryan conrad tallies his first a little frustration by spark conrad is an exceptional athlete when he was a high school senior, he was the number one rated lacrosse prospect in the country out of Loyola Blakefield in North Baltimore. I remember watching a Virginia pregame practice up in the, uh, up at Syracuse in the indoor facility up there. And after practice, there was a football. He kicked a 55-yard field goal as if it was nothing. There's nothing that Ryan Conrad can't do. He, he's, 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 a, he's a next level athlete. He's amazing. Conrad, the Virginia product and current water dog in the PLL, has some international chops that he's already cut. Scored the game-winning goal in the U.S.'s 13-12 comeback win over Canada in the 2019 U19s. This, though, his first appearance at the senior level in the Men's World Championships. Kind of a theme for Team USA. A lot of newcomers to this Men's World Championship roster. You got some veterans. I mean, there, there's some guys with some experience. Michael Earhart, who was in that shot, he's... Maryland 2014, so he, he's around 30. Jesse Bernhardt's 32, whose wife is is due at, at, at home. You've got, you know, old, older guys like Rob Pinnell, who's 33. Uh, and, and then there's the young whippersnappers. Yeah, okay. Pinnell's in his third world championship. You see Matt Rambo there. He's in his first, but has been a mainstay since winning the Tuerton back in 2017 at Maryland. 
as one of the premier attackmen in lacrosse. So cool for Matt to make this team. You know, this, 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 making this team is a dream for all players. I got cut three times at the tryouts, so I know what it's like not to make this team. But making this team is it's a career maker for these young men. And a lot of it has to do with who, who's the coach, quite honestly. I said on my podcast the other day to Kevin Corgan, Notre Dame head coach, I said, Kevin, if you were coaching Team USA, the roster would look different. He said, yeah, it would. If Lars Tiffany was in charge of this team, it would look different. This team is John Donowski's view of the 23 best players in the United States. And, and so I know we put a lot into it, but there's a lot of gray area guys selected each year. It, it, it is what it is. It's also important to differentiate between the 23 best players and a team comprised Correct. of the best group that, of 23, that's exactly, right? Cooper, that's exactly what I'm, what I'm insinuating, yes. So for the U.S., they'll get one more crack at John Janowski picking the 23 best guys he thinks can beat Canada and win a world championship. Well, he has built a program for Team USA in his eight years at the helm. And talking to Terry Foy uh, inside lacrosse, really thought he looks the part of a coach much more comfortable at the international level in his second world championships. Time winding down here in the second, under 15. Shot skips wide for O'Neill. The feed finishing tight. Michael Sowers cutting to the net. Smart play by Rambo. He's a step ahead. He's a step ahead of the action. Rambo's positioned behind the goal. Okay. Make the next play. Don't be. Don't be reactive. Be proactive. What does he know is going to happen with less than 10 seconds to go there? Well, someone's going to take a desperation shot. So he puts himself in line to catch that O'Neill bouncer, which was kind of a soft offering. But Rambo's right there, and so it serves as a pass, and then he redirects it in front. So Matt Rambo with the assist, using his brain. A really smart play. Third dime of the night for Matt Rambo with a game-high five points for Team USA. As the Stars and Stripes have opened up a game-high eight-goal lead. And with 2.2 seconds on the clock, a loose ball push will award the ball to Australia with one final prayer before the break. Thomas Graham lets it go, and Reardon is there to end the first half. The United States of America jumped out to a 5-0 lead and have cruised into the break, leading 10-2, spreading the wealth around the offense. Eight different scores on 10 goals, and the fans with plenty to cheer about. You're watching the 2023 Men's World Championships from San Diego, California.
Few settings better than sunny Southern California. San Diego, the host city for the 2023 World Lacrosse Men's Championships. And the event already off to a rousing beginning. It didn't take much time for the action to start as it dropped in in a hurry. USA and Canada. The consensus top two teams in the world open things up. And Quint, they did not waste any time in providing the fireworks. Festival atmosphere at Snapdragon Stadium. A great crowd on hand. USA's Brendan O'Neill scores to get things going for the Stars and Stripes. Josh Byrne answered for Canada with those tricky hands of his around the net. And then Steve Aoki was, in many ways, the story of halftime. It was tied at four and then erupted into a concert. And the decibel levels for the United States were strong in the third and fourth quarters. Their defense turned it up a notch against Canada. Clark Peterson with the only goal for the Canadians in the second half. And the youngest member of Team USA since the early 2000s, Brandon O'Neill, stole the show with three goals. I thought the, the key to this game was Trevor Baptiste and TD Erlin winning the faceoffs for the U.S. And they kind of strangled the Canadian offense in the second half. O'Neill, the MVP, with three goals in what'll be round one of what should be a, a, a two-round fight on July 1st. Simply a preview, and you will want your tickets for the semifinals and finals. You can get them at worldlax2023.com. The men's championship from San Diego, presented by Rady Children's Hospital. grow up and it goes by fast at Rady Children's we're growing up too always looking for answers and new and better ways to care for your kids that's true researching innovating breaking ground as they soar to new heights Ignition. we're ready for takeoff too. Lift off. grow up and it goes by fast at Rady Children's we're growing up too always looking for answers and new and better ways to care for your kids that's true researching innovating breaking ground as they soar to new heights Ignition. we're ready for takeoff to lift off Halftime at Torero Stadium and the United States taking care of business 10 to 2 on top of the Sharks of Australia. We welcome you inside the broadcast booth. He is Quint Kessinick. I'm Cooper Perkins. We're thrilled that you'd spend your Friday night with us. Quint, we see the U.S. spread the wealth. Eight different goal scorers. Matt Rambo leading the charge. Two goals and three assists. A very different performance than what we saw against Canada. I, I like the positive steps they they've taken. I think they're sharing the ball better. And I think a guy like Matt Rambo, who's he was pretty quiet, quite honestly, against Team Canada. You're showing he's showing the versatility in his skill set, whether it's dodging, feeding, making the smart play in transition. So I, I think if you're John Donowski, you're happy with what you're seeing offensively. You highlighted Tom Schreiber at the top of the broadcast, and he really did set the tone. Two early goals, stinging corners. You can't say enough about Captain America. He's the passing point guard at the top of the arc. And then there's Rambo capitalizing down below. I got him with five points in that first half. Schreiber mirrors him. 
keeps his space in a, in a good relative distance. The transitional offense has been better. McCardle fills the scene there, multiple passes. And then on the extra man, watch this. McCardle over the shoulder to Rambo. So teams playing more relaxed on offense, a little looser, right? They're, they're, they're playing loose, they're flowing better. I think everyone's finding their roles. And, and I, in my eyes, it, it's a major upgrade from what we saw two nights ago. Second half coverage coming up briefly. The U.S. on top 10-2 to two at halftime. Cotton Candy Skies in San Diego, the host city of the 2023 World Lacrosse Men's Championship presented by Rady Children's Hospital. We open up the second half with the United States of America thoroughly in control on top of Australia 10-2. The fans have had their share of highlight reel goals to cheer for, but for the Australians, they've done a lot of good things as well. The score might not reflect it, but they are a tough group to play against. They are not ready to quit by any stretch, and their fans have come out in as good of numbers as I think any fan base we've seen to this point in the tournament. Their head coach, Glenn Meredith, is, is like the coolest guy. Uh, goes back to 1990, I think was his first year as coach of their senior A team. He was in Denver in 2014. We spent a lot of time with him uh, prior to that tournament in Vail, Colorado. He's got a solid group of assistants. You know, since COVID, Australian lacrosse, uh, the numbers are down a little, and they're looking to use this tournament to spearhead uh, some positive movement going forward. But th this is a group that's perennial, perennially top four in the world. And again, their goal is to be right behind the U.S. and Canada. And yeah, they'll be right back at it tomorrow against Canada here in the same field at USD. That's at 4 o'clock local time, 7 o'clock Eastern. They'll be followed by the USA and the Haudenosaunee. Haudenosaunee looked good before this game. They played on this field highly skilled. I thought uh, Kyle Jackson played great. He's so shifty. Does such a nice job dodging for them from up top. Austin Stotts, of course, the, the, the pinnacle of a finisher with eight goals. So far, the high in the tournament, not just for a game, but of anyone collectively. Obviously, yeah. And, and, Cooper, they obviously have Lyle Thompson, but I thought Zach Miller looked really good. Jacob Paseno, LSM close deep man from, from Albany. And, and uh, so that that's, that team's got high, high skill. I mean, high skill. They're beautiful and fun to watch. Yeah, Miller had a renaissance this winter and into the spring playing for the Georgia Swarm alongside Lyle Thompson and Jeremy Thompson. 
uh, in the National Lacrosse League. Good to see him out in the field game being a real factor for the Haudenosaunee. USA on the clear. Jack Kelly now between the pipes for the Americans. Sean Aaron has taken over the reins between the pipes for Australia as both teams make goalie changes. Ryan Spark, all things considered, actually played he did. pretty darn he well. He did, he did great. Aaron, lefty, Union College graduate in 2012. He's lived in Australia for 10 years. He was in Natanya back in 2018. The lefty plays on a high arc. But it doesn't matter to Brennan O'Neill, who sneaks it past his right foot for the first goal of the second half. There's no arc that's going to stop this one. O'Neill coming out of the box as a midfielder, which is really weird to watch. And he's got a short stick. Well, the last time this guy was covered by a short stick might have been like sixth grade. And he slices and dices. You see the speed power combination of the only collegiate player on this USA roster, Brendan O'Neill. Hat trick on Wednesday night against Team Canada. Australia called for the violation as Jackson Stock goes early and the USA goes right back on the offense a couple of minutes into the third as the USA attack has come to life in this second game of pool a play after a fairly quiet and very meticulous deliberate game against Canada where seven goals was plenty to beat Canada now Bertrand one of the goals in the first half Eight different first half goal scorers. Rambo feeding him and can't connect. Grabbed by Donnie Howard. Nice play by Howard. Played at BU. He's from Mercer Island, Washington. One of my favorite stops, the Seattle suburb. This guy's like part Russian, part Australian, and part American. 43 in green, Donnie Howard. Mercer Island is kind of the class of the Pacific Northwest them and Bellevue who is coached by Eli Gobrecht not a part of Team USA but a former star at Ithaca and in the PLL a lot of footprint around the West Coast from elite level lacrosse players now coaching yeah and you mentioned and, and that's the great thing about the NLL expansion and the PLL visiting some of these cities like PLL will be going to Minneapolis in early July like, the San Diego Seals are here in town. Trey LeClaire, who's a Canadian who played at Ohio State, now lives in San Diego. That's going to benefit so many young kids who, who are going to you know, meet Trey, watch him play, maybe see him at a clinic or a camp. The Stallion from Surrey. Meanwhile, Australia, very methodical into their offense. Ball handled by Matt Wood. He spins it back around for Braden Panty. I like Romar Dennis of the Atlas, former Loyola College. He lives out in San Diego. This is where he calls his home. That, Romar Dennis, also an assistant coach in Los Angeles at Loyola High School. That never happened. That never happened until the last decade or so. Romar working for Jimmy Burrell in that great Loyola program up in Los Angeles. Uh, you know, titan of, of that area right now. You've got an alum by your side. Nice. Nice look, Braden Panty, as the penalty comes in. Goodrich just ignores the pick and runs it over. Well, Australia into the man up for the second time. They converted their only opportunity of the first half. Braden Panty working things around the perimeter. 3-3 three, three set. The crease man's really low, right on the top of the tangent of the crease, and now they change formations. And that's Mitch Baker who's kind of shadowing around the crease. Isaac Cahill, one of the two goal scorers. Now it's Wood. Australia. Not going to go down without a fight here against the USA, despite trailing 11 to 2 in the third. US really good stick position. Sticks are up. Step down for Houston, who passes it up. Everyone okay. moving their feet. Five seconds on the penalty. Houston surveys and throws it in between his two teammates. 
Matt Wood and Braden Panty. Impressive man down defense by the five defenders for Team USA. Liam Burns playing the pole. Jesse Bernhardt, JT Giles Harris, and Jack Rowlett. We haven't mentioned Rowlett, the 26-year-old out of North Carolina. Solid as a rock. Sowers with some unsettled opportunity here. And <laughs> Did you hear the fans say, wheels, wheels? It's kind of a joke at, at youth games, summer say, events. The, 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 the dad's always yelling out, wheels! Feels like a club game on the adrenaline circuit when right, okay. you hear that. Sowers on the perimeter. USA back in action tomorrow against the Haudenosaunee at 7 o'clock local time. Haudenosaunee, of course, a blowout win over England that was quite impressive. Lars Tiffany's First tournament as the head coach. Rambo working on Ashby Dennis. Pinnell stopped by Aaron. Ran nice. it all the way. Clean snare by the lefty. The Haudenosaunee, regardless of where this, this tournament is held, they're always the home team. And, and the respect that these fans here in San Diego have for them, the other nations, and those guys are treated like rock stars. Like, like the guys from Poland, Mexico, Peru, they like and they're impressed with Team USA, but they like worship. I was talking to a 75-year-old guy named Dan before the game who was at his first ever lacrosse game, an instant fan of the Haudenosaunee. He said he's coming back tomorrow to watch them play the US, and that just gives you an idea of how contagious all of this is when you see the high level of play. Kick save by Kelly. You watch that game today, some of the finishing skills. Like they don't play in print, they play in cursive. And, and they, they play in calligraphy, it's beautiful to watch. Tarafenko feeding in tight, Danny Logan turned aside by Aaron. The Ohio boy, Danny Logan. As good of a look as the Dean Middle get. Now Lucas Parsons Quintia in the alley. Just over halfway through the third. Donowski's got to be a little frustrated at the shooting there, but Sean Aaron, his brother Luke, won two titles for Coach Dino at Duke. The Duke connection's not limited to Team USA. Kay Hill trots it behind the net, reverses it for Mitch Baker. Now Houston goes right at Tarafenko. Sweep dodge, Houston. That's his best trait as a midfielder, Houston. Plays for Charlie Toomey, who's an assistant coach for Team USA. Levin and Green, he's a right hill, right handed downhill dodger, whose dad played professional rugby in Australia and then moved to Lancaster, PA. That is why Matt Houston is a shark.
Brady Children's Hospital, presenting sponsor of the 2023 World Lacrosse Men's Championship. The largest children's hospital on the West Coast, ranked among the 10 best children's hospitals in the nation. Well, the settings don't get any better as the Australians enjoy their trip to San Diego. The score doesn't tell the whole story of the Sharks, though. They are a proud program that has competed tonight and will compete to the end, but just too much firepower for Team USA. The Aussies have to feel at home here in San Diego because climate, topography, having, having been to Sydney for eight days about three years or four years ago, I, I, I can say like they got the same type of palm trees, same type of plants, same type of uh, marine layer in the morning. You know, very, very similar to, to parts of Australia. Pretty good rooting section to make them feel at home here as well. They travel great. They always have. The Australian fans will let you hear it. They will give the, the, the bartenders and the pubs plenty of business this week here in San Diego. And look out in the gas lamp district. Meanwhile, the USA still working on things. Trying to use this game as a little bit of a proving ground, particularly on the offensive end, where they've been much sharper than they were two nights ago against Canada at Snapdragon Stadium. This Aussie team, you go back to the 70s and 80s, they were known as a group that they would try to lure their opponent out to the pubs for a long night, singing, caroling. Then they'd be known to wake up at 7 and try to run it off before the game the next day. You ever traveled with Australians, you know that they're a different breed in many, many ways, in all the best ways. Penalty flies in, ball touches down, and the U.S. will head to the man up as Rambo draws the flag. And U.S. will stay with their basic 3-3 three, three set, three across the top. O'Neill had success from this formation against the Canadians, 24 in white. Schreiber the trigger man top center as you take a second look at this on the left side. Ram Rambo's played a strong game with five points, drawn some penalties. Kick save Aaron on the rip by Kelly. And the Australians win the backup race. So they have a chance to kill off the penalty and go two out of three on the man down. Of course, there is not a failure to advance clock in the international game. So they have as much time as they want to get it across the timeline. Let, okay. yeah. Won't use much of it. Matt Wood trots it across. That save is huge on the man down by Aaron, who got a cup of coffee for the Hamilton Nationals back in the MLL. As I said, Union College, the senior year, they went 13-5 and made the NCAA quarterfinals. Union College in the capital region of New York, up by Albany. Australia being shut out so far in the third. Just the one goal by Brennan O'Neill since halftime. 11 and a half minutes into quarter number three. Wood pushing aside a defender. As Goodrich who was hounding him. Now back behind the net. Cahill, hard drive. Spins it back around for Panty. Panty has Logan on the other side of the cage. Here comes Panty in around X. And a stop by Kelly. Oh, excuse me, gets past Kelly. And Australia has their first tally of the second half. I'll tell you, this third quarter has been kind of lethargic for Team USA. Their lone tally, a Brendan O'Neill isolation goal. And now this defensively, what just appears to be poor communication. You got a goalie hung situation. Kelly comes out with a cross check. The defense is just too soft. Danny Logan makes a choice here. That's, not, you know, again, Jack Kelly had an ACL injury. It's not the kind of goalie that I want out of the net chasing attackmen around. I, I don't love that strategy given given his mobility. TD Erland with a clean face-off win as Australia cuts it to eight. And the USA bungles the clear. So Australia gets a chance for back-to-back -back possessions here following the goal by Panty in his first of the night. We, we credited U.S. was playing a strong first half, especially the second quarter, but they've given that all away. And you see the body language of John Danowski on the USA bench. It's 
tells the real story of this team kind of regressing now in this third quarter. Matt Fuss, first time we've gotten to call his name. Third appearance in the Men's World Championships, part of the teams in 2014 and 2018. Clock ticking towards 90 seconds to go in the third. Up a hesitation, McDonough. Chased all the way to the alley by Giles Harris. McKinnon. Australia trying to get one before the end of the third. They've got 70 seconds to work with. Forcing the middle for McDonough. And they turn it over. Great crowd here. Torero Stadium. You play in this late game, and a lot of the other nations who played earlier in the day could come out and enjoy a game. This festival of 30 teams here. Got 86 play internationally as the sport of lacrosse now ascends towards Olympic inclusion. 30 teams, 107 total games at this 2023 World Lacrosse Men's Championship Tournament. This is just the second full day of games. Well, a couple more days of pool play before we get into the playoff brackets. Not for the faint of heart, Cooper. I mean, you got 60 minute running time games, but only 23 man rosters. Played in heat, you know, you catch a game in the middle of the day. There's a big difference, it's cool now. Sowers feeds McCardle, back cut, Schreiber, stopped by Aaron. And Schreiber takes quite the shot for the with second, two flags coming in. Second time tonight, and he's been TKO'd down to the carpet. Princeton graduate 2014 after playing at St. Anthony's on Long Island. His dad was a big time star. Doug, is, he and his wife Kathleen have a, a daughter, Lillian. Schreiber, the trigger man for the PLL Archers. Here it is. Yeah, it's helmet to helmet. A little high and late, and now the hold as the quarter comes to a close. The U.S. goes on the man up when they start the fourth quarter. Firmly in control. United States 11, Australia 3 at the end of three. The 2023 World Lacrosse Men's Championship, sponsored by Rady Children's Hospital, the largest children's hospital on the West Coast, 
ranked among the 10 best children hospitals in the nation. Coming up, plenty more Pool A action. Tomorrow, the Aussies are back at it against Canada, who has a day off today. The United States turns right around to play the Haudenosaunee, which makes for a very interesting matchup after watching them dismantle England. On Sunday, a couple more interesting ones, the Haudenosaunee and Canada. And then we'll wrap things up on Monday before heading into the playoffs. All that on the ESPN family of networks. Start of the fourth, USA on the man up after Sham Schreiber took an illegal body check with just over two seconds remaining in the third. US one out of three on the extra man tonight. Kelly Schreiber, good to see him on the field despite taking a couple of hard hits tonight. O'Neill, skip pass, Kelly hums it into the screen. A little bit of English on that for Connor Kelly. Back around the perimeter, Schreiber coming up a career year in the NLL. O'Neill zips it wide, backed up by Pinnell. The elder statesman and kind of captain from the back. You have Schreiber up top, you have Pinnell in the back. That's kind of the dynamic for John Danowski's offense. And watch his passing. One cradle and a pass. One cradle and a pass. One cradle and a pass. Kelly into Aaron Stick. Came on after halftime, and Sean Aaron has held the U.S. to one goal in the second half. He's in no rush now, big Sean Aaron. Played at Phillips Academy 65, 65% when he was in college at Union D3 school. So I said 65%, I don't care where you play. And I love his outlets. He throws straight over the top, lefty outlets. He throws dimes. Now full-time resident in Australia, part of their club circuit. About 22 club teams in Australia. He plays for Camberwell. Also some representation from Williamston, Altona. I was tempted to stay in Canada after being there for eight days. In Sydney, the gorgeous opera house and the bridge. Stayed downtown. Did a college football game in Sydney. Stanford against Rice back in 2018. Great. Aust incredible week Australia kills off the penalty and then takes the timeout well to your point there are no more hospitable folks than the Australians oh. great food very interesting people as well and highly athletic I was working out at a gym every morning and I remember looking around at all the Aussies they all had these incredibly developed legs like they were either rugby players, soccer players, or Aussie Rules football players. And then I got to spend some time with the Sydney Swans, the Aussie Rules football players. You talk about some really interesting, interesting cats, highly skilled, who can take what amounts to a football and punt it on a dime at 40 yards and hit you right in the chest. Uh, lacrosse is not as popular as those other sports, but in Perth, Adelaide, and Melbourne, as you said, it's got its pockets where historically it's been played in clubs uh, for since 1876, actually. And their national team, the Sharks, a very proud program. They all have their beer jackets, as they call them. Once you're a shark, you're a shark for life, according to their head coach, Glenn Meredith. They wear them to the opening ceremony. So those green blazers or beer jackets, I got to get one of those. How do I get one of those? You'd be a my, shark. My high school had, is green and gold. It's the same color scheme. I have a green jacket, but, it, but it's more like a, a master's green jacket that I take out. Like, there, there is more of an evergreen green. My preferred green. How, how, do you, how do you get a green jacket with a patch? Take Glenn out to dinner and as, see as if a you convince I'm him. not a shark. I, you know, I, I can't play for their national team. But I love their blazers. That and the Scottish kilts, I, I thought, took, took the uh, best in show at the opening ceremony. So maybe the Mexican sombreros. That and Team Korea exploding during Steve Aoki's performance was pretty fun as well. <laughs> Hard dodge by McDonough, and he goes head first into the post. Looks like JT Giles Harris sprinting off will be called for a penalty, and the Sharks will head to a 30-second man up. McDonough had a nice left-handed goal against England last night when he was inside the, the attackman attacking the zone. He's from Morristown, New Jersey, as you get a look at JT Giles Harris.
McDonough plays at Towson for Sean Nadlin. Let's another look at this call. Presses top side, cuts it underneath. Does a good job. He gets his hips and turns his shoulders so that JT Giles Harris is basically cross-checking him in the back. Baker running the point for Australia. And Lockie Walker. One for two on the extra man tonight. Skip pass. Oh, so wide open on the crease. Matt Fuss but couldn't handle the heat from Mitch Baker. And here's Ryan Tarafenko, the one-man clear, gets tripped up, eats some dirt, and keeps right on chugging. And draws a flag in the process. A little bit late coming onto the field. Hard drive in Tarafenko, isn't he? Guy only has one speed, man. It's like 100 miles an hour. Yeah, the Columbus tank out of Ohio State. Rambo, a five-point night for Team USA. They've scored just once since halftime. Ricardo there to back it up and maintain possession and go into the man up. With a hold, a 30-second technical on Australia. Gives the U.S. their fifth man up opportunity of the night. U.S. has kept it simple with this extra man. They haven't showed any kind of variety in personnel or formation. It's been the same 3-3 three, three set. Schreiber, top center, Kelly the righty. Kelly kicks right off the chest protector of Aaron. As he's been dynamite since coming in at the start of the third quarter. Schreiber. Kelly deflected out of bounds. Pinnell wins the race. U.S. trying to flash a little bit more urgency out of the third quarter break. Now Rambo rings the post. Rambo had the big first half with five points, but this USA offense has kind of gone dormant now in the second half. But they have one goal. One goal by Brendan O'Neill. That was just moments into the third quarter. Looked like an onslaught might be slated to happen. It just didn't materialize. Here's O'Neill dodging. We're back even. Schreiber. Two goals in the first quarter for Captain America Tom Schreiber. Kieran McCardle has a goal of his own. He's defended there by Donnie Howard. Short stick behind the net. That's a tough matchup for Howard. McCardle sneaks underneath and floats it over the crossbar. Very deliberate dodging by Kieran McCartan. Driver working the left hand. Dodging on Thomas Graham, switch to the long stick. It's Lockie Russell. Back to Pinnell as he goes at the short stick. Pinnell spins it wide. Good matchup recognition. Shriver and Pinnell picking on the the shorty, but the Aussies have a lot of confidence. Schreiber to the wide open, O'Neill. Runs his way into trouble and then throws it away. So Two on one for the ground ball. And how about that? Defensive possession by Australia. That was awesome defense for the last two minutes. That was great from all their shorties, their poles. They will not go away tonight. The offense can get anything going. There's the potential for this to get interesting in the final eight and a half. I know they're just on the same page, Cooper, with one another, making good slide decisions. There's a consistency in their effort. They trust one another, and their effort is supreme. That, that was great defense. I love it. Back of the net, Campbell McKinnon playing a two-man game with Mitch Baker. McKinnon driving on Danny Logan. Plays locally here in San Diego for the Seals in the NLL. Rookie of the Year finalist this past season. They've got him isoed way out on McKinnon. Arguably no better defensive short stick yeah, midfielder in the he, world. He's lining him up, and uh, if McKinnon comes at him, he's going to jack him up with a cross check. Fuss feeds for Cahill. Spins one more McKinnon. Seven and a half to go. McKinnon gets some space. Cut off by Rowlett. Australia trying to reset their offense. Rowlett pressing out. He senses weakness. 
Australia expected to be pressured tonight. That was something their head coach, Glenn Meredith, thought USA would probably do. Haven't seen quite as much of that from the Stars and Stripes as we might have expected. Post shot, kicks out for McDonough. He draws a penalty, though. That was an effective lefty rip, three-quarter arm release that he yanks near side against Kelly, and it had the goaltender beat and caught iron. Slash on Liam Burns will send the Sharks to the man up when we come back. Seven to go, USA up by eight. At Morgan Stanley, old school hard work meets bold new thinking. <laughs> At 87 years old, we still see the world with the wonder of new eyes, helping you discover untapped possibilities and relentlessly working with you to make them real. Old school grit, new world ideas, Morgan Stanley. Kids grow up, and it goes by fast. At Rady Children's, we're growing up too. Always looking for answers and new and better ways to care for your kids. That's true. Researching, innovating, breaking ground. As they soar to new heights, Ignition. we're ready for takeoff too. Lift off. The 2023 World Lacrosse Men's Championship, 107 total games on the ESPN family of networks, 30 teams in six pools. Top five ranked nations are in Pool A, which is on display tonight. First ranked USA and the fourth ranked Australia in what is game number 22 out of 107. 20% of the way through the tournament's action. As Australia goes to the man up out of the break. Clock floats under seven minutes. The Aussies hanging in there yep. after a 10 to two lead for the US. We've seen just two total goals in the second half. Really impressed with what we've seen from them in the second half. They're typically a team. They're in such great shape. They get better as this tournament goes on. Some teams get worn out, fall apart a bit. Not these guys. Houston probing. Now it's Lockie Walker. Wood around the perimeter. The penalty is only 30 seconds, so they're going to have to speed things up here. Cahill, one of their three goals. Baker feeding the cutting Wood, and he's stripped on a nice recovery by Jack Rowlett. I love Rowlett. Nice ride. There it is. I mean, they're just hustling and making plays. I'll tell you, the, the Aussies, as I said, I, they always get better as this tournament goes along, and that's challenging for them, okay? They, the flight to Australia is like 20-something hours. Backside, Baker, stone by Kelly. You come to a new city, you got a new climate. The food is different. You're in a completely different time zone, so sleep is not great. And it, it can be difficult. Is it difficult? International athletics, I, I think people who have never done it, whether it's wrestling, track and field, soccer, whatever the sport, it's a lot harder than you realize. This save is something pretty, watch. You'll see pipe to pipe, low crouch, stick stays tall. Look at Kelly, well, he finishes that save on top of the crease. Talk about being aggressive and attacking. U.S. trying to finish their second game of pool play on a high note after an explosive first half. That saw them rip off five goals in both the first and second quarters. But their offense, as you said, partner, has gone dormant in the it. second half. And those who back the USA as 10 and a half goal favorites are going to sweat this one out. 
Conrad. He's called for a ward, and Australia will get it right back. Here come the Sharks. Down by eight, but far from quitting. McKinnon underneath. Kelly, scoop save, and a quick outlet to Logan. Transition for Team USA, but he will slam on the brakes. USA is going to get everyone's best shot. Tomorrow will be a fun one. USA in the Haudenosaunee. Same time, same place, 7 o'clock local time on ESPN Plus from Torero Stadium. O'Neill, hard dodge, gets above GLE. Lyle Thompson, Austin Stotts had eight goals today. Really impressed with Kyle Jackson and Zach Miller. Rambo bodies his way, Aaron's there. The ball ends up in the goal. Ricardo slapped it in, but he's in the crease. Good officiate. This, uh, this game's been officiated really well. Th this tournament, it's my fifth world championship, and I, I, I got to tell you that the, the officiating has improved dramatically every year. It gets better and better and better. That's a credit to the 60 officials who are here in San Diego. I thought it was really cool that they all walked out during the opening ceremonies, too, as a group. Greeted by Welcome to the Jungle, no less. <laughs> yeah, that was weird. You think that was their choice? Timeout Australia. I know for a fact it was not. Australia. You do? I do. So Australia takes the timeout, and let's chat about the Sharks. We've talked about their effort. We've talked about their conditioning. But I think what stands out above all else is their sense of pride that just bursts forth in every aspect of their game. There's no part of them that doesn't think, A, they shouldn't be on the same field as the USA, and B, any reason why they can't compete given the tremendous number of obstacles they've had to overcome simply to get here logistically. And, and Glenn Meredith, their head coach, deserves a lot of credit in formulating that, that pride and that chemistry, that sense of respect and honor it is to wear that Australian jersey. Uh, Glenn's been doing it since 1990 city to city i spent a week with this group basically in vail colorado as they were training for the 2014 world games and i'd go to their practices every morning and the spirit the smiles they love one another you know they all come from club programs as you talked about it and mostly in perth adelaide and melbourne they compete against one another in in those leagues and then to represent to wear this green jersey is highly significant and they've they got a proud legacy of playing extremely well in this tournament yeah i know they've never won it they came in second in 1994 they got a handful of bronze trophies they're, they're a powerhouse team internationally particularly impressive is just how many of their players were born and raised in australia it's a testament to the development of their developmental programs the way they've been able to build players that can compete on a world stage and be a top five team in the world club based programs where athletes pick up the stick maybe a 16 17 18 year olds and they do not rely on american ringers very refreshing to say the least panty clock under three to go tarafenko defending Walker looking for help, feeding, Gibson behind the back, feed, Baker couldn't handle. Wow, look at Rowlett. Despite the save, Australia comes up with it, but tied up, loose ball, hold goes the direction of USA. Be interesting to see how the U.S approaches this last two minutes do they just hold the ball or do they keep the pedal to the metal and, and look to increase their goal differential which is a criteria one of the tiebreakers of course that's only relevant for the u.s if they do lose a game because they do hold the tiebreaker over canada having beaten them head to head in the opener and that would give them some margin for error against the Haudenosaunee tomorrow. Although they will be favorites nonetheless. Rambo 
zigzagging his way through the defense. Now Bertrand fighting above goal line extended. The feed sours from Conrad in the U.S. 13 and a half minutes into the fourth has just their second tally in the second half. Sours from Conrad. I got Sours with two goals. This game is shaping up to be kind of a good learning experience for this USA team. And you think about their coaching staff afterwards, they'll go to the locker room and sit this team down and talk about it. Hey, great first half, but there's some things we got to work on in the second half. And, and so it, it kind of sets up easily for them to be an attention getter before the Haudenosaunee game tomorrow night. Sowers playing midfield here. This is a guy who's made a living in this sport playing at X behind the goal. A very different look and feel to his game here in San Diego. That's a theme across a lot of teams, especially at the higher level, positionlessness. A lot of crossover between the attack and midfield. We see it from the US, we see it from Canada, saw it from Israel yesterday. Smaller rosters, you need guys who can cross train. O'Neill trying to step into a shot, couldn't handle the pass from Sowers as the U.S. on the man up. Just one for five on the extra man. O'Neill hits the post. Gosh. A whistler got past Aaron. Pinnell kick save. I think we have your answer. There's still Pepper in the net trying to build that momentum into tomorrow's Haudenosaunee game. Kelly pulls it, and Aaron, nearest man, Australia with one minute exactly will get the ball back. Less than 60 seconds separating the U.S. from a 19-0 mark against Australia all-time in men's world championship games. A couple of those coming in the final. A few more in the semis. This one in pool play as the Americans will move to 2-0 and take over control at the top of pool A. Big game tomorrow against the Haudenosaunee before they wrap up against England. Baker racing in under 30. One final push from the Sharks. Here's Houston. Goes right at Rowlett, gets turned away. And is stripped as that will all but do it. Rowlett heaves the Gilman, and the United States beats Australia 12-3 and moves to 2-0 in Pool A play. A tough effort from the Sharks of Australia, but too much firepower, especially in the first half for John Donowski's Team USA. 10 of their 12 goals in the opening half, and they coast to victory down the stretch. Matt Rambo, the offensive MVP, with five points in the first half. I thought Jack Rowlett, 22 and white, defensively was really super strong. Uh, All-world caliber for John Donowski and this USA team. There's some good in the first half, yeah, but there was some bad in the second half, so uh, potential for improvement prior to tomorrow's game against the Haudenosaunee. But, man, hats off and, and a big salute to, to Team Australia. They, they played their guts out tonight, and I think when they shake hands with the U.S., they have earned worldwide respect. Well, for Australia, they'll be back at it tomorrow against Canada. The U.S. will play the Haudenosaunee. For Quint Kessenick, our entire crew here at the University of San Diego, I'm Cooper Perkins saying thanks for watching this edition of the World Lacrosse Men's Championship. Come back tomorrow. Plenty more lacrosse to be played.